It is I. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wearing my fedora, which if you're watching on video, I, this is a video. If you're watching on video, you can see my fedora. And yes, I am videoing this because this is a very special podcast episode. Uh, no, I think there's some things that need to be said about homosexuality and the marriage issue. And I, interestingly, I'm over here in Asia, and this is becoming a big issue here in Asia. And no one knows why. I, I have a friend who's a PhD candidate, and I asked him, why is this an issue? He asked me about it. And then there's another, another uh, rich pastor who's a friend of mine. And, and, and he was talking about this. And Yeah? What do you mean that's an oxymoron, George? No. The, the pastor? I have lots of friends that are... A pastor who's a friend of mine is not an oxymoron. Oh. Oh. A, a rich pastor of a, of a... George, I don't want to get... I don't want to get... <laughs> I don't want to get distracted. I... Well, anyhow, I, sorry, the podcast observer is, well, he, that's why he's, he's supposed to comment. So you, I guess you did a good job. But any, anyhow, no, I mean, but I asked, I, I have friends here. There's, there's a rich pastor who's a friend of mine. And then there's another friend who's a PhD candidate. And they both are talking about the, what the government says about the marriage issue. And, and I asked him, why is this a big question right now? I mean, did, did something, did someone get shot and killed? Is there a, is there a, a, a court hearing coming up? What, what event triggered this? And they don't know. It's been a social pu push, folks. It's been, people have been pushing it. So, some people, they don't like the term uh, agenda. They don't like that term. Well, but agenda is a list of things that you want to get done. I mean, it, it, there's no single event that triggered everybody talking about this, which means that it has been on the list of things to do, a.k.a. an agenda somewhere. That doesn't mean there's some vast, evil conspiracy to try to make it happen. Uh, but yeah, there is uh, something for those of us that read the dictionary once in a while. It's called an agenda. And uh, yeah, that's what's pushing this. And it is suspicious, though. That the items on the agenda seem to be the same thing over here in Asia as they are in America, because there aren't any large single issues bringing this to the forefront uh, in the United States. Except the Supreme Court did hear something on it. Now, look, listen, what, what should the government say about marriage? I mean, the, the marriage question, when the government, the gov defining marriage question, the government shouldn't. The whole question about how to define marriage in government is not about how to define marriage in government. It's about letting government define morals. And I mean, marriage is only necessary if you believe that it is a moral thing to do. If marriage does not have a moral, if it doesn't serve a moral purpose, then it's not necessary. So it's, it's, a, it's a moral question by definition. So th this whole how should the government define marriage is just an attempt to get the government to, 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 to manipulate. And if the government defines marriage the way Democrats want it one day, then the government's going to redefine marriage how Republicans want it the next. And it's best to just get the government out so we don't have to argue about that. So what do I think about the government being involved in marriage? I think that I think the government should not get married to morals. That is a non-marriage that is very welcome. Now, with the question of marriage, we can't talk about it without talking about Bible. Uh, a lot of the idea comes from Bible. Bible's been a sort of a moral teacher for a long time. So whether you like the Bible or not, the Bible is a part of this discussion. And I think the Bible has a lot of very important things to say about uh, sexuality, orientation. Most importantly, about morals, the Bible says that we don't judge them. 
We've got a, a, lot, a lot of people. The Bible, the way you the, you, know, you understand the Bible is you read it every day. That That's how you're supposed to understand the Bible. That's what the Bible says about understanding the Bible. You understand this book by reading it every day. And if you read it, and then you'll do it. And if you do it, then you'll prosper. And when you prosper, then you'll have success and victory. Victory over the darkness. That's Joshua 1.8. Now, if, if you've listened to a professor who's read the Bible once or a hundred times and then put it back on the shelf, rather than reading it every day so that he can do it and prosper and have victory, if, if, you've, if you've got someone who's, who's studied it academically but doesn't read it every day, that person's probably going to have trouble understanding it. I mean, if you don't read the book how the book tells you how to read the book, you're probably going to have trouble understanding it. So if you don't read the Bible every day, uh, I'm not going to judge you because the Bible tells me not to, but you might not understand some things and you may need to bear with me. So uh, if you have an opinion about the Bible, but you don't read it every day, you might want to tone down that opinion and, uh, and read the Bible every day. I've been reading the Bible every day since 1999. I missed seven days. Uh, I think five of them were all-nighters. One of them was a road trip. And the other happened a few months ago when I was coding for days and days and days. But every time I'm in bed and I remember that I didn't read my Bible, I get up. What book do I read? I started with Psalms in 99. Uh, now I, I read James. If I don't know what to read, I just open to James. It really covers a lot. So, what's the Bible say about homosexuality? Well, it doesn't say directly. The Bible does not talk about morals directly. It assumes that the reader already understands morals. It makes assumptions about morals. And if you're going to read the Bible and you're going you're gonna to think... I mean, a lot of people read the Bible and say, well, I don't see the Bible specifically teaching. Well, the Bible doesn't specifically teach a lot of things. Proverbs aren't even a direct teaching. They're just pieces of wisdom that can be true a lot of the time. That's what a proverb is, right? Some of the proverbs directly contradict each other because they're not global, universal, like every detailed moment of, every, you know, we didn't have lawyers when the Bible was written. So it's, it's not uber literal. Uh, uber means very, uh, for those of you in Read Rapids. So I'm, uh, by the way, I'm wearing my uh, fedora, in honor of open source software, and for those of you in Read Rapids, a fedora is a hat. Uh, but but I, I I don't use fedora, uh, the open source software. But I, I honor open source software. I'm wearing my fedora here on this uh, this very special podcast with a video. And if you don't know about audio, if you're still watching this awesome video of me sitting here in my chair wearing my fedora, talking with my blank paper that makes it sound like I'm doing something, you need to understand something about audio. Audio is intended for you to press play and then work. So you've got ideas going in while you work and you get twice as much done. That, that's the idea of audio, uh, in case no one ever told you. So the Bible makes assumptions about morals. It presumes it. It, it assumes you already took that class. It's level 200 and, and, you all, that, and that, the definition of morals was in level 100. We assume it's prerequisite. You've already got that. And we have to look at how the Bible assumes it. Now, when the Bible assumes things about sexuality, the Bible does not assume that homosexuality is a state of being. The Bible, when it assumes things about morals and sexuality, the Bible views sexual orientation, homosexuality, as a behavior. Now, if you ask the teachers, either the teachers on Sunday morning or the teachers in public education the, the first uh, five days of the week, or the, well, Sunday morning is the first day of the week. So anyhow, if you listen to the teachers on the first six days of the week, whether Sunday morning or public education, they're going to assume they talk as if, they don't teach it directly, that homosexuality is a state of being. They seem to agree on that. I mean, Sunday morning in public education, agree that, that homosexuality is a, is, is a state of being. That's kind of what you call a clue when Sunday morning in public education agree on something. But then we've got Bible and we've got non-religious psychology. And they agree 
that, that homosexuality is a behavior, not a state of being. Now, how, how does psychology say that it's, it's a behavior? Well, psychology is the study of human behavior. If homosexuality is not a behavior, then psychology doesn't have any opinion about it at all. The fact that psychology addresses the issue means that psychology thinks it's a behavior. Otherwise, it wouldn't fall within the purview. So, homosexuality, psychology and Bible, they agree. It's a behavior, not a state of being. And Sunday morning and the homeschool Bible with the thumpers and all that agree with public education that it's a state of being. Now, what? You know, I, I kind of think that a lot of the problem a lot of our disagreements about homosexuality come from us thinking that it's a state of being. And maybe if we sort of sided with non-religious psychology in the Bible and we, we saw that homosexuality is a behavior, um, it's not your identity. It's something that you do. Like uh, for me, drinking tea. I'm thirsty and I'm going to have some tea here. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was, that was really, mm. that was great tea. But, uh, red, red tea. But if, if we could go in, if we view homosexuality as a behavior, that, that relieves a lot of the stress and the tension, doesn't it? So we get government out of it and we view it as a behavior. Now, homosexuality, ultimately the behavior of it is an attempt to have children. Jesse, that's not what, get, you're getting it wrong. That's not what it's, a, no, maybe it's playing too much. Maybe scientists one day will, will make the, 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 fi, the, the fiction movie uh, with Arnold, uh, the j junior, the movie junior. Maybe that'll become reality and a man will be able to be pregnant. Scientists could probably do it. But if scientists do it, then you don't need to do homosexual things to make the baby. The scientist does it. So homosexual behavior, the actions of it, really don't serve a purpose other than to play. It's play. It's playtime. It's leisure. And what we have right now in the country is too many people asking questions about leisure. Can we, can we do leisure and luxury in those things? Or, uh, or not. Is it okay or not for me to play and play and play and do this play and that play? We're asking about what play. Nobody is asking about whether or not we can address Maslow's hierarchy of needs, whether basic needs or, or high level self-actualization needs. I mean, for example, a lot of the divide over Donald Trump was the people who didn't want him, the people who didn't like Donald Trump kind of think that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the, the lower basic levels are already met and we're up to meeting the higher levels. If, if you talk to the people who kind of didn't like Trump or really hated him, they, the people, the, the more they didn't like Trump, you, you go see if this works a lot of the time, not, maybe not always, but the more they didn't like Donald Trump, the higher up they thought we are as a country on meeting Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now, for those of you in Reed Rapids, if you don't know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, go look up Maslow and uh, Google will probably correct it for you. Now, the lower, the people who really supported Trump thought that we have a Maslow hierarchy of needs, a low level, like basic needs crisis. That's that you just, I'm not judging. The Bible tells me not to judge. I'm just making an observation that I, I, I really think that fear was too big of a part of marketing, but people actually disagree about where we are about Maslow's level of needs. But the homosexuality question and the, the, the rights question, the human rights question in, in the, the, you know, should we let refugees come in without seeing if they're terrorists? You know, I, the, 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 there's a lot of moral questions going on in the country and those questions, a lot of the time, they really come down to questions about, not all the time, but whether or not it's okay to play. I want someone who can love me. You mean love you in your playtime. Work can also be a, a, a matter of, uh, of, of, of loving someone. But these questions are about, I want someone to love me, but they mean during playtime. 
And we're asking questions about luxury. Can we buy luxury things even though we can't afford it? Is that okay or not? And can we play too much rather than work? And, and if people are asking questions about Maslow, we need to meet basic needs or we need to self-actualize. We need to become better people. If someone's talking about Maslow, we need to meet basic needs and become better and better people and make friends and become good people. Oh, you're judgmental. I, I want to know if it's okay for me to play all the time. And I'm going to call it uh, uh, human rights and that sort of thing. Well, I, I, think, I, I think homosexuality, what I think of it, my personal opinion, try this on for size. I think it's too much play. I mean, engaging in sexual activity really drains your energy. You know, I, I don't, um, <clears throat> no, I, I don't, I don't do that. And it, it really gives me a lot of energy to do other things. And I've, I've, I get, a, I've gotten a lot of, a lot of more things done when I decided that I'm not going to do that. And so ultimately, homo, I mean, if, if you take out the sexual activity and the play and the energy draining Homosexuality isn't sexuality anymore. I mean, wanting people being uh, together in different ways, not, you know, not sexually active like kaboom. Uh, people, that's, that's normal. The, 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 the Bible doesn't say anything about people uh, lying in bed together or something, you know. As long as there's no kaboom, the, the Bible's, there's nothing wrong with that. Not, not from the Bible's perspective, not from the Bible's assumptions. So I, I think that if we just stop playing so much and we stop exploding our energy uh, all the time and, and we try to get busy and work, I, I think that the question just goes away. So I, I don't really judge people. If I disagree with someone, I, I, I can disagree with people very easily because I don't judge. When, when people think that it's wrong to think other people are wrong, which is itself, you know, th that person actually struggles with judgment, judging other, a con condemning judgment. Not some judgment can be good. There can be good judgment. But, but condemning people, judging in a condemning way. Uh, look, I don't, I don't judge in a condemning way. So if I disagree with someone, that's not a problem for me because I don't judge. And be careful of the people who tell us, oh, we're not supposed to think anybody else is wrong. That's judging. Well, no, it's not. The Bible says this is right, that's wrong. Love the sinner, hate the sin. You, you'd know that if you read your Bible every day. So I think that there's a, a lot of questions going on. And, I, you know, I, I think a lot of people who think they're homosexual, they're, they're actually not. They, I, 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 for example, I think a young man, I've, 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 I've had this conversation with many people. I said, so, so I'll talk to a young lady. So you don't like, you don't like boys. Nope. You're not, you're not interested in men. Nope. I said, well, maybe you're interested in man. Maybe you don't want a plurality of boyfriends. Maybe you don't agree with MTV's script that you're supposed to have as many boyfriends as you possibly can. Maybe you just want one. Maybe you want a bad a thousand. And you just haven't found the right man yet, and that's why you think that you're not interested. I agree. You're probably not interested in men in the plural. Boys in the plural, whatever we're going to call it. You, same thing. You might have a young man. He's not interested in girls. He's not girl crazy. I mean, haven't we taught people that if a young man isn't girl crazy that he might be a faggot? Remember those days? The, the, the homophobic days. Homophobia didn't really address the real issue. It, it viewed, homophobia views homosexuality as a state of being, not as an action. And all we've done is replace homophobia with homophobia phobia. And we still think that it's a state of being. And identity is who I am. Oh, no, it's not. You, you're called to be so much more. You're, I mean, that, that's the best kept secret on Sunday morning and public education and in psychology, for that matter. The Bible's big teaching is that it's, 
we're called to be sons of God. I mean, we're, we're called to a greatness that's beyond what they said of the Greek gods and goddesses. God views us as beyond that. We're, we're, he thinks that we're just incredible. And he died to make sure that it's possible. So we don't have to deal with Sunday morning religion in order to get to him. Sunday morning could be great, but it's not necessary to get to him. Sunday morning could be terrible, but so what? It's not necessary to get to him. If we view ourselves, I mean, in this great way that God views us, maybe we'll want to play a little less and we'll work more and we'll be happy in the process. Martin Luther, 1500s for those of you in Read Rapids, Martin Luther said the ultimate theological question is not what I think about God, but what God thinks about me. What's the Bible say about homosexuality? Well, not a lot. It assumes a few things. It assumes that you'll probably be unhappy. But more than that, the Bible talks a lot more about how we're the sons of God. We're, we are, we, you know, Illumism, it's going to be coming out soon. Watch for it. Illumism. I, I, I don't listen to conspiracy kooks, but we're going to be seeing Illumism come out as a, as a well-known public religion, a centralization of multiple, the plurality of religions together. Illumism, ascension, becoming high level. We're going to see a religion come out like this and be known and taught like this. And finally, the conspiracy kooks will probably shut up when that happens. But you watch. When Illumism comes out, they're going to start teaching that you can become gods. And the place where it differs, where it's different from the Bible teaching, is that God thinks that we already are like demigods. That's why we, Jesus said it. Have I not called you gods? Little g. Not, not deity. God views us as already there. We just have to realize it about ourselves. And if we realize it about ourselves, maybe we won't uh, worry so much and fight so much. Now about this term, gay, uh, I'm a writer. Hmm. Sorry, I needed some tea here. I'm a writer and words mean things and I don't I don't like to sexualize any word that means happy. There are a lot of people who claim to be homosexual and they say that they're gay but then they have depression issues and they'll say I'm so depressed. You know, we have I mean I, I see this. It, it, gays depressed about Trump. Wait a minute. Gays are depressed if they're depressed and they're not gay. The homosexuals started calling themselves gay because they wanted to say that they were happy. That was the idea, and it, it hasn't worked, and it's, there's a lot of anger about, I don't like anger. I, I don't like people fighting. I don't like it. So I don't, I don't try to keep up with the memes. People don't like how the memes change too much, you know, LGBT, and then there's LGBTQ, and then Rush Limbaugh calls it LGBTQXYZ, and it, it okay, maybe it needs to change, maybe it doesn't, but I don't. A changing meme doesn't get it all. We don't know what the issues are going to be tomorrow, folks. So we can't try to come up with a meme that's going to describe everything. How about we just have a meme where we know what it is? I'm straight and I'm very gay about it. I'm very happy with my straightness. And if straight means one thing, then the other wouldn't be happy. The other thing would be bent. Bent can mean a lot of things. But most importantly, bent means that you're on something. You're something you want to get done. There, you want to. You want to. You're. A, you got a cause. It's a maybe a good cause. You think it is anyway, and you want to get your cause out there. You want to get the word out. I mean, someone that quote unquote comes out. That that that's not just about that person's private sexual feelings. That person wants to announce something to the world to try to make a change happen, good or bad, probably good. We usually try to make good changes. He's bent on something, and it's not a bad thing to be bent. I'm bent on something, but not this. If we're going to do the comparison, if straight 
means you, it's a question about sexuality. I think that the other category, which includes a lot of stuff, would be bent. And now we're all free to let gay mean what it really means. Very happy with ourselves as we are. There's a lot of bent people that are gay. And I'm straight. And I'm gay. I woke up this morning very gay. And I had my coffee and I was gay. It was a latte, by the way. And, and then I went outside in the cold rain. And I was quite gay about the fact that I didn't care. And this is cold rain. It's uncomfortable. But I don't care because I choose to be gay. And I was quite gay about the fact that I could choose to be gay. And I've been very gay about this very special podcast where we've talked about very gay issues. And I hope that all of us can be a whole lot gayer as a result of this.